Have you ever heard of a cheese so controversial it's actually banned in some countries? Well, today we're going to learn all about Kazumarzu, a traditional Sardinian sheep milk cheese with a very unique production process that has landed it on the prohibited food list in many places. I'm sure just the name alone, which translates to rotten cheese in English, is enough to turn some people off. But behind this unappealing moniker is a flavor and texture that cheese connoisseurs have described as addictive, suburb, and sublime. So what exactly gives this cheese such an infamous reputation? Well, the thing that sets Kazumarzu apart is the critical role that fly larvae play in its creation. That's right, maggots are intentionally introduced into the cheese wheel in order to kickstart the advanced fermentation that gives Kazumarzu its distinctive soft, creamy texture and tangy flavor. I know you might be thinking, maggots in my cheese? No thank you. But the process is actually more controlled than you might imagine. It starts when the pecorino cheese is left to age and harden over several months. Then in May or June, cheesemakers carefully transfer the wheels outdoors and slice off the top rind to expose the interior. It's at this point that cheese flies are purposefully brought in to lay their eggs in the cheese. As gross as it sounds, these aren't ordinary houseflies. They're a special local fly species appropriately named the cheese fly. Their larvae have evolved specifically to help break down cheese, not animals or feces. Within days, the eggs hatch into hundreds of tiny translucent worm-like maggots. They get right to work digesting the proteins and fats inside the cheese. And let me tell you, they are voracious eaters. As they devour their way through, their digestive enzymes cause the cheese around them to essentially liquefy into a soft, gooey mass. I know it sounds disgusting, but just stay with me here. After three months, the maggots have transformed much of the interior into a smooth, creamy pate-like texture while avoiding the harder outer edges. At this point, the cheesemaker will carefully scrape out or break up the maggot-filled areas to mix those delicious, creamy pockets throughout the remaining firm parts. Now, this is when it gets crazy, because the maggots can actually jump up to six inches out of the cheese when disturbed. So cheesemakers have to take precautions like covering their faces with mosquito nets. And they use sticks and gloves to mix the softened interior back into the firmer parts very carefully to avoid getting pelted by disturbed cheese mites. Once dispersed, the maggots are left to finish consuming the cheese for another couple months. During this aging, enzymes from the maggots break down the cheese even further while fermentation by bacteria adds that distinctive flavor. By October and November, the maggots will have turned into little cocoons and cheesemakers will crack them open to remove the casings. Then they clean off any remaining maggots before the cheese wheels are wrapped in paper and sealed with vinegar and oil to prevent further fly infestation during storage. So at this point, no living maggots remain, just their vegetable casings and the boosted flavor they imparted during the breaking down process. The finished cheese develops a very soft, gooey texture that's actually meant to be scooped up with a cheese knife rather than sliced. And the flavor is intensely nutty, tangy, and sweet with hints of caramel and vanilla from the breakdown of proteins and fatty acids. By most accounts, it tastes incredible. So why on earth has Kazumarzu been banned? Well, first off, the fact that live insect larvae are intentionally introduced understandably makes a lot of food regulators uncomfortable. Even once the maggots have been killed off, their digestive byproducts remain embedded in the cheese, potentially introducing hard-to-kill bacteria and pathogens. While food historians think sheep herders likely developed this cheese as a form of preservation in Sardinia's hot climate over a thousand years ago, Kasumarzu was only officially defined in food safety laws in the last few decades and it failed to meet modern health standards in many developed countries. In the 1980s and 90s, Kazumarzu was repeatedly banned at various points in Italy due to food hygiene rules. While banned, it was still often produced illicitly, gaining an aura of taboo. Regulations have relaxed a bit in recent decades under special exemptions for traditional regional foods, but it still occupies a legal gray area to this day in Italy, with many health officials still seeking an outright ban. Beyond Italy, the sale of Kasumarzu is banned nearly everywhere else in Europe along with the US, Canada, and Australia due to the risks both from the larvae themselves and their ability to transmit foodborne pathogens. Technically, it can't cross EU borders under their food safety laws either, limiting legal access primarily to within Sardinia. So why would anyone possibly want to make or eat this bizarre cheese? 
Well, for Sardinians, Kazumarzu is deeply rooted in local culture and tradition. Food traditions run especially deep in rural Italian regions and provide that intangible connection to ancestral ways of preparing cuisine using what the land provides. Sardinians are understandably proud that the island's landscape and climate lend themselves to producing unique flavors found nowhere else through time-honored techniques. Over generations, development of rotten cheeses evolved into a realm of mastery all its own, with experienced cheesemakers refining their complex arts into treasured signatures of craftsmanship. To lose Kazumarzu would make many feel yet another piece of their heritage risks being erased by homogenizing forces of modern convenience. And while health officials see risk, locals argue that no serious cases of illness have ever been documented from eating properly aged Kazumarzu. That's a pretty bold defense to make about a cheese swarming in maggots. But Sardinians counter that the vinegar-sealed paper wrap provides protection and assert that the larval enzymes digest pathogenic bacteria anyways. Even if some contamination survives, they believe consuming small amounts of pathogens can simply strengthen immunity, an argument that sets skeptical health experts on edge. But so far, no major scientific study has conclusively proven whether Kazumarzu does indeed pose concrete hazards when correctly aged. And for now at least, tradition continues to trump theoretical risk. Beyond cultural importance, food critics and chefs celebrate Kazumarzu for its unmatched flavors and textures, hailing it as a world-class delicacy unlike any other. Who knew fly larvae ways could make cheese so tasty? For passionate foodies, the joy of experiencing truly unusual flavors makes even the strangest local delicacies like Kazumarzu well worth seeking out. Of course, for the squeamish among us, getting past the mental image of writhing maggots is too tall an order no matter how divine the cheese itself might taste. And that gut instinct of disgust is what food regulators still target in safety arguments promoting the cheese's continuous ban. But in Sardinia itself, you'll find no shortage of hearty eaters eagerly awaiting the next seasonal batch of wriggling Kazumarzu. Families still regularly produce small quantities for personal use, even when commercial sales face restrictions. Events celebrating traditional foods keep the art of Kazumarzu production alive by passing knowledge through generations. And specialty food tours eagerly include a visit to try this rare delight as a rite of passage for visitors. So could you bring yourself to dive into some squirming cheese? For me personally, I think I'd have to work up to just a bite. But who knows? A tiny taste might just get me hooked too. And I have to admit, my curiosity sufficiently peaked, even if still battling squeamish instincts. Because at the end of the day, the pullouts and engagement question here is overcoming superficial fears to try appreciating time-tested local tradition and mastery. Can we open our minds enough to fairly weigh personal discomfort against cultural value, creative craftsmanship, and sheer originality that has spawned such an oddly alluring delicacy? Perhaps the difference between corroded rottenness and refined fermentation comes down to perception born either from suspicion or trust. In the story of Kazumarzu, there lies a thought-provoking parable reflecting conflicts between global and local ways. As an acutely rare artisanal food dependent on specific breeds of flies found only in Sardinia, how long can Kazumarzu culture withstand creeping standardization from encroaching outside norms? Should we care enough to save the cheese anyway if healthy risks prove true? And in a modern world continually sanitizing itself, perhaps to pathological extremes, do we lose some essence of being human if we snuff out long-honed peculiar arts like Kazumarzu cheese making? Can embracing some controlled danger and oddity offer rewards and discover delights and connection to ancestral crafts? At the very least, Witnessing such impassioned, almost defiant protection of identity through a cheese so bizarrely singular certainly gives intriguing cultural insights into what makes this ancient Mediterranean island uniquely itself. Sardinia has never easily bent to outside forces across its history, after all. In the unfolding story of Kazumarzu, perhaps we're just seeing one small island struggling to balance change with continuity. And that is a tension most places grapple with for identity in our globalized, interconnected area where expanding choices paradoxically seems to homogenize and displace distinctiveness. So whether you might enjoy some or not, I hope you at least appreciate the strange journey behind Kazumarzu a bit more now. This indelibly regional cheese embodies how landscape, climate, microbes, and even insects come together in food origins we too easily neglect. And through that lens, we restore awe for delectable peculiarities that
that could only ever arise from one tiny patch of earth at the confluence of nature and generations of human guidance. In all its weird magnificence, Kazumarzu challenges us to celebrate the improbably sublime environments, cultures, and tastes that diversity across our little planet makes possible. Who knows what other unique delights remain undiscovered if we don't lose them? Perhaps we could all do with some exploring beyond familiar boundaries now and then even if encountering some spine-tingling oddity. By learning the human stories behind food so oddly alluring and culturally precious as Kazumarzu cheese, we expand the mind while honoring timeless skills that safeguard glorious one-of-a-kind creations for future generations. That's enriching no matter how you slice it.